So welcome back, everyone. Um, I think it's a crazy day for all of us, uh, at least for me, having four hours of sleep in the last 36 hours. But it's not a, been a, a crazy day because of that, but because uh, the awesome sauce that's happening right now. Um, we have successfully launched the uh, Dragon uh, to the ISS, and even more important, and I don't think that that's a coincidence, it, th there has to be a connection between us, um, Joomla 4 Beta is out. And uh, one of the core features of Joomla 4 is going to be the new workflow being uh, implemented, and uh, Benjamin is going to show us through the current state of workflows in Joomla 4. But before we get into details, um, just a brief reminder for you guys, um, Use the JEP20 hashtag if you're going to do social media posts about this event happening right now. Um, uh, donate at jbeyond.org if you love our event and would like to see more. And uh, what else do I always forget? I have um, it's getting... Which one? Sponsor. Sponsor. Ah, sponsor. Thank you, Plus, for sponsoring this conference. It's highly appreciated. It's getting late for me. Um, I now need to take notes for a total of three things. Benjamin, the stage is yours. Um, I'm really curious to see what the current state of workflows is. Uh, blow us away um, and make us even more curious about uh, George's talk, um, which is going to follow yours about Joomla 4. So show us the, the single most important feature, at least from your perspective. Thank you, David. And thank you, David, and your team for organizing this event. It's really great. So um, let me share my presentation. Um, approximately three years ago, um, I had my first, um, tell me if you see it, oh, I should be there. Yeah. Um, approximately three years ago, I had my first um, workflow session and uh, I dig out the old presentation and it starts with this slide here. Um, we had a Joomla 4 publishing workflow. And today we are talking about Joomla 4 workflow version two which is a big step forward um, compared to the old version and why you will see in the session. The first um, question was, why do we need a workflow or do we need it at all? And um, let's assume we have a scenario like that. Uh, you have a customer and say, okay, hey, I have some people here. They will write content, they will write article and um, they should push it in the system, but they should not publish it so we may have a second person to publish it. And the question is, okay, can we do this with Joomla? And um, for example, we have here authors and we have a publisher with um, specific rights. So um, that's very easy. And the next step would be, okay, would it be possible to get receive emails um, if I have to publish something? And if you look in the Joomla, in the Joomla 3 version, we have a content plugin Joomla where we can activate it or it's activated by default, sending um, emails to different people. So, and the question was always, is this enough? And now the next um, step would be, okay, now I have more people um, in my flow. I have people who should proofread. I have people who should publish, but they shouldn't be the same. So we need different permissions. So for example, in this case, we have the authors like before, then we have someone who confirms, then we have someone who proofreads, then back to the confirm again, and then someone who publishes. And now we have a little bit of problem in Joomla because um, it's possible to build this workflow, but it's not possible to restrict to this workflow. So, um, and if you get in, in something like that, it's much more complicated. And um, I think you agree it's not possible to do something like that with Joomla 3. So this was the, the idea the, um, three years ago. Could we um, open up the current publishing system? So pub publish, unpublish, archived, and trashed, and um, create something more flexible. So um, we're starting with that and um, we said, okay, the first step would be probably we should be able to rename it. Um, it's possible with um, language override in Joomla um, for the moment, but then you have an um, all or nothing override. So what we would like to have is an individual override. Um, we also would like to add new 
um, new states, new, um, yeah, new positions where we can go. And um, this isn't yet possible with Joomla Core or to be um, more, more detailed, we would like to do whatever we want. So it um, shouldn't be limited in some way. So um, the good message is um, until yesterday, all the stuff was already implemented in the latest Joomla 4 Alpha um, 1000 whatever version. Um, and we had it implemented. And it was called the publishing workflow. And it was quite OK. It worked um, like expected. And um, you could set up new stages. You could set up transitions, which are the connection between stages. And you could set up your own workflow to publish, unpublish, trash, or archive articles in the way you want. So the question now is, OK, when we have something like that, why do we need a version 2? And um, there are two reasons for it, a big reason and a small reason. Um, the big reason um, was George. George wasn't happy with the current implementation because, to be honest, it's very unflexible. So you can publish, unpublish, but um, for, I guess, if, if I look who is using Joomla, for a lot of people, um, they don't need uh, much more states. They, they, they just have a little blog, they have a little website where they're put in their articles and they publish them and they have no real workflow. So we, we thought about, okay, how can we support people who stick with the current publishing system but would like to have other opportunities? Um, for example, um, let's say um, we, we need some guidance. Um, if someone submits an article, um, we would, would like to define a workflow, what should happen with this article, um, regardless of the publishing state, until it's published. For example, it needs an intro image. Um, it needs some text. It, it needs some, um, a, a specific category has to be set. Um, some metadata has to be set, and so on. And what we saw is with the current publishing workflow, um, it was not possible to implement this uh, in a good way, so to speak. Um, so we met uh, last year before Corona, not sure if someone remembers the good old times, um, where we um, defined the concept. And this was the first concept um, we, we had uh, how to implement this. And yeah, I didn't understand it too. If you don't understand, so no worries. We still get it managed. So the first thing we decided was we have to go away from this static publish, unpublishing, whatever stuff. We have to um, remove this from the publishing workflow and work with plugins. So um, this, we would like to have a, a publishing plugin and um, whatever plugin, and the plugin should be triggered in the system when we want it. On the other hand, um, a very complex um, situation um, was created with the old publishing workflow, to be honest. Um, we implement a new term which was called conditions. And we had something like a an, an mapping, um, an, an indirect uh, publishing state. So we had an article which was there without any condition. Then we have had a stage um, where the article is in. And, and linked on the stage, we had a condition if the article is published or unpublished. So we had no direct con connection anymore. We had always we have always to go over the workflow itself, and this wasn't very cool. Um, it, it makes Joomla a bit slower, and um, if you you can't see in an article if the article is published or not, so um, we didn't like that idea. So what we did is, um, and that's I guess a good message for people who who said, hey, I, I like the Joomla three way. We converted everything back to the Joomla three-way and um, separated it from the workflow. Um, it, this means that you can now, and I'll show you in a second, you can now use your articles like in Joomla three. But if you want a workflow, you can activate the workflow 
and then you can um, have a new layer and you can um, set up your workflow. So what we do, um, that was the start of the theory. Um, and I would say, let's go directly in the live session um, to show what I spoke about and to go into my details. Um, now I have to reshare my screen, one moment. Okay. Good. So um, this is the current Joomla 4 um, backend. And um, here I'm on the dashboard. I logged in as a super user, as admin. And now um, let's go into the workflow. Um, we decided to disable the workflow um, by default uh, because uh, when we had a publishing workflow, we had to enable it because everything was dependent on this condition structure. But now as we reverted uh, the whole structure and work now with an extra layer, um, we are able to disable the workflow nearly completely and you can act the normal way. So if you go now to articles, we, we can, um, no, it's loading. Um, now we can normally use all the stuff here, like publishing, unpublishing, as we want. Oh my God. Oh, my laptop is a bit slow. Let me reshare because um, I have some graphical issues here at the moment. Okay, so let's try again. So you can um, publish and unpublish your items uh, normally like you did in Joomla 3. But um, what you now can do is, if you go to the articles again, I guess I don't have a debug on, so. It's uh, the local host. Okay. So what you can do is now we go to the options. And um, if you go into integration tab, um, here we have the, the option to enable the workflow. And if you refresh here, um, now we Refresh. We get here a new entry um, workflows. 
Um, if you install Joomla uh, the first time, you get a default workflow, which is called basic workflow delivered um, in the system, which is, um, yeah, let's let's say, take it this way. It's, it's a way to see what is possible with the workflow. So in most cases, um, it will not be the one you were using. It's just a little example um, what you can do with the workflow. That's the basic workflow. And I created a Joomla default workflow tool to see um, the comparison between the current one and Joomla 3. But let's start with a new one in this case. So we had a new one, let's say, um, called JEP 2020. We have now um, several options. We have on the right side the this default uh, enable disable um, options. We have a default option, um, which I came in a minute to it. And we have, of course, the default permissions where you can set up um, who can edit, create, and improve it and change it. And uh, Brian Thiemann uh, pointed out that we should probably extend the permissions here. And he's absolutely right um, in a more, because at the moment it's it's the same permission system like categories and fields are using or similar one. So if you are allowed to edit um, an article or the articles in general, you're also allowed to edit the permissions in the, uh, the, the workflows, which shouldn't be the same. Okay, so let's create it. And what now happened is that um, we create a workflow and the default uh, stage will be created for us so we can now extend our workflow and create our own flow. So we have here now our chat 2020 workflow and as you can see, we have stages and transitions. Um, the question now is what are stages and transitions? Um, we have three terms which are important in our case. The first term is the workflow itself. The workflow is the container, so to speak. Um, in the container are the stages. The stages are the, the entries, the points, the, the status um, where the article is at the moment or an item because the workflow is not only for articles um, but also in the future available for other components. So, um, yeah, what, what we... So we have stages in this workflow and the transitions are the linking between the stages. So um, if I click here and we can check and you see what I mean. So um, at the moment we have no transitions. So what we can, oh, let me go back, look, let's go start with stages first. So if you go to the stages first, we have a basic stage. Yeah, and um, there we can add new stages, um, which are uh, names. So that there have no deeper functionality um, beside being names. Um, so we know, okay, stage is, um, let's say, needs review, then it's an it's only a name that we know, okay, it needs a review, but it has no functionality like before. Okay. And uh, one strength of the stages is that all the names, like for example, um, I guess menus are also um, capital of doing it. You can add language keys here um, and they will be automatically translated. So you can make the stages multilingual, but of course you can also type in some non-existing languages, language constants or names like um, new.
And um, here again, we have a default and we have the status um, like before with enable, disabled, and so on. And the default one is the one which when we start a new article and put it in this workflow in the, in the CHAP 2020 workflow, it will get automatically assigned to this new one. And if we now start with the next one, let's say um, we call it um, it's proofreading. And here we don't do it as default because it should not start here. It should start with the with the um, new. And the last one is now is um, online. Okay, now we have uh, created three stages, which are now in the workflow um, without any ordering, without any connection, there are there. And if you now create an art article in this workflow, it will be new but nothing can happen or will happen because there's no connection between stages. And what we now implement as next step um, are the transitions itself. So what we need to now do is we go to the transitions and now we create the connections between the different stages. And now in the transition, the trans transitions are now the main element of the workflow because here all the magic happens. Um, let's say we have the one and um, we, we do an approve. Here we can define from one, from which stage it should be transit. Is this the English word? I'm not sure, but from which stage it should move to another stage. So you can define, say, okay, it should be always possible to execute this transition or only, let's say, from new to needs proof reasoning. So the idea here would be, hey, someone submits some content and the first step is, do I approve it in a general way that we can start the workflow or should I throw it away? And now here we have two tabs, transition actions or notification. That are the important one. Transition actions. Now here you can define what should happen with an article if this trans transition is executed. In this case, um, we, we, we don't want to have it published, so we don't change the publishing state yet. But for example, we could say, hey, I would like to have it featured. And as I saw in the chat, um, we have also a notification system here. And um, Christiane wrote this. So what we can do is, we can now send notification to specific user groups like manager or whatever, or specific users. At the moment, we have only three users here in the system. And here we can uh, add additional text. So we have a language constant will be sent as default. Um, Christiane can say what, what's exactly in it. It's something like, hey, there is a, um, a new stage for your article. Please look into it. And then we can add an additional text and and review. So let's say we move it to manager. And on the last step, permissions, we can now decide who is allowed to execute this transition. And this means um, if we create a lot of transition, we can set up for each transition which group is allowed to execute it. For example, if you have your boss could publish an article with one click, and a normal employee have to go each step and make proofreading and whatever reason. So you can set up a, a real big workflow and then define on each step who is allowed to execute it. So let's say we approve it. And on the next step, then um, we, we are in the needs proofreading stage. 
And based on that, we say, okay, now we're publishing it. So saved, and now we say, okay, we want for, from needs proofreading to uh, go online. Now we say here, hey, please publish. And the feature set is still featured from before, so we don't have to set up anything here, or we could unfeature, which wouldn't make sense. And now we can send, uh, for example, to super users um, the message, hey, new article is online. Okay, so now we have here a little workflow created. Uh, and the question now is, um, how can we get this, this workflow to an article? Um, we have now two scenarios. We have a new article, which is created um, in the future, and we have old articles, which already exists. Um, for new articles, the, the carrier, so to speak, is the category. So that means um, it depends on which category you put in your article um, then the specific workflow is set. Um, when we designed this, this workflow concept, um, we took a, it took a lot of time to think what we should do. The first idea was very native and, uh, and say, okay, um, when I create an article, I would like to decide in which workflow it comes. The disadvantage here is, or the problem here is, that there are a lot of pages um, outside where people create articles who are not capable of deciding which um, workflow should be used. So a US administrator can set up um, the category where the workflow is um, assigned to. Um, for the future, we are not sure if we, if we add the first option again or, or additional. But for the moment, it's uh, the way in this case. So we, we have an article, let, let's say they're categor uncategorized. And if we edit here, uh, we have a new tab where we can assign the workflow in, it's loading. Um, So what we have now here is the workflow tab. So all the other stuff is like default, like Juma 3, but we have here the workflow tab. And if we click here, we have different options. Um, what we can do is um, on the one hand, so default is use a default workflow. And you remember this default option from before where I said I, I mentioned in a minute here, um, this would be the default one. So if you say use a default workflow, which is in this case a basic workflow, um, the system looks up and say, okay, which workflow has this star? And we use the, this workflow and we start with the stage with also with the star. So we start with default workflow and the default stage. Or we say, if you have an, an hierarchy in the, in the categories, we could set up the workflow on the top level category. And then so, so say for all ch children, hey, just use um, inherit from the base category. So it looks up the whole tree of the categories and looks if I find some information uh, which can take. Or we, we hard code or we, we hard assign and say, okay, for this category, please use the CHEP 2020 workflow, um, which in this case we do. And now let's go into, to the front end. And here I install the, the sample data. We have somewhere in 
submit article. I'm, I'm not logged in. If I'm an author, I can log in now. And if it's loaded, then I have this submit article um, entry. It's the default form. And if you check now um, the publishing area here, so, so we have the title and as, as known before with the editor. And if you check now the publishing one, we have a new entry here. We have now transition. I guess we will rename it in the future um, because that's a combination of the current state and the transition I'm allowed to execute. And as you can see, um, if you save now the article, it will be new, the default one, of course. But um, we can't execute any transition because we don't have the permission. But anyway, let's create your article. And here is uh, your article. So if we go back then to the content, the background. And here, as you know, here I'm the super user and have more permission for the whole stuff. Not submitted yet. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> it seems something breaks from the last update. That's why it's called beta, right? Yeah. <laughs> Could be that I have to reinstall. Okay. So then we have to take, and luckily I, I created an, an existing one. So um, I have articles here. So um, let's go here. Guess category also here, yeah. history. Guess new feature. Um, okay, so what we have here, if it would work uh, with the new one, is that we have now here a new color stage where we see, hey, we are in the basic stage. So now we don't have the, the chap um, workflow, but we have the um, our own workflow and uh, the default workflow. So we see here the def the workflow, we are in the basic state. And as you can see now, and we will change this in the future because the tooltip is wrong. Uh, we can't click here anymore and also can't click here because all this publishing, unpublishing stuff is managed by the workflow itself. So what now happens or what we can do now here is um, we can open here the option and now we can execute different options like um, we would like to feature it. And now I hope it does not write in any history. Regarding that history table, George says that you have to reinstall because you're having a, a new code base without the DB updates being applied. OK. 
Okay, yeah. it's code base from yesterday. So yeah, all right. It's it's a database from yesterday, but a code base from the beta, I guess. Yeah, and I mean, Joomla's development is at lightning speed right yeah. now. So yeah. a day, I mean, it's a it's a whole day. That's that's a that's a lifetime a day. Uh, yeah, emerged at 10, 10 a.m. this morning. <laughs> Thanks, George. Um, okay, so but you can see here now we, we can uh, set up the features um, with the workflow. So it happens with the workflow. And that's the way you're working with the workflow. So you set up your stage. Um, people who have the permission to execute it can change now different parameters of the article. And if we go into the workflow itself, you will see that it's not possible um, to, to change the status, for example, and the features without a workflow. So you decide what should be happen or what can be happen in the workflow. Seems okay. Okay, so here you can see now, and um, you don't have any um, drop downs anymore for featured or for status, but you can um, change them with the workflow. And that's the basic functionality. Um, we are running a bit of out of time, and I would like to show some other stuff for for the future. So I would. Um, close here the sharing and switch back to the presentation. Give me one second. So just have a little break. Um, are there any questions yet, David? Um, the questions that have been asked uh, were directly answered by uh, Harad and George. Okay. Um, questions were if it's possible to um, uh, connect plugins to workflow. Uh, answer is yes, there's even a new plugin group related to workflows. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's a, a feature request. Um, by Patrick Jackson, uh, it would be good to apply a transition to multiple selected stages versus currently option is all or a single one, like degree exactly. selectors or menu items. Yeah. Um, yeah. Who, who wrote it? Sorry. Patrick Jackson. Yeah, exactly. Patrick Jackson gave us the feedback, and it's a really great idea. It was a bit. Um, the reason why it's not there um, is, is time reason, but um, I really like this idea, and we, we wrote it down. And I try to get it implemented um, for sure because I really like the idea to have, let's say, to have you have twenty transitions uh, at twenty stages, and can say these two stages um, can be covered with one transition, for example. Um, I can't promise it because um, I'm not the one who who is pushing pushing the button, but. Um, I will definitely bring it up and try to implement it. Okay. If there are no... yeah, there are more questions. Can oh. I set which fields inside the article uh, are required before the article can be saved? Um, yes. Um, therefore, I have to go into into the the plugin system. I plan for uh, for later, but um, okay. Then I have to re-switch again. Um, Back to the system because and the other the other question is how workflows interact with action log. Okay, um, at the moment uh, it does not interact um, in a way because I'm going to show you why. The current state is is the following: um, all this option you saw before, this notification, this um, in the transition, this set up um, the publishing state or set up the feature state, that are all plugins. So in fact, if you disable all the workflow plugins, you have a workflow in the background, which uh, goes from one stage to another, but does nothing in the system. So the workflow itself is very stupid. It, it can't do anything. That's why we rewrote it. And before we had this condition stuff, and 
was very um, complex and it was it has a lot of dependency. So we removed all the dependency and you have a workflow which does nothing. And um, now the idea or the strength of the workflow um, is that there are plugins and you define what should happen when you execute a transition by installing specific plugins. Of course, at the moment we have only three plugins, um, but if you can write your own plugin and for example, um, here you see the publishing plugin, the featuring plugin, the notification plugin. And for example, you could, could write a plugin who checks bef before the transition is executed, um, is there an intro image there? And if no, you, you return false and then uh, the transition is killed. Or you, um, and afterwards, you have an after transition event where you can say, now I would like to resize uh, the intro image because my customer, for example, always uploads a 10 MB image and I would like to compress it a bit. So you write, what should happen when the transition is executed? And uh, to get log entries, um, you would need to write a log plugin for this. So there's a plugin group. And um, if we go into this plugin, um, we, we have, yeah, it's, it's not much option in the plugin itself. And we, of course, can uh, give them access, which does not make that sense, I guess. But um, you can also whitelist and blacklist. Um, at the moment, we have only articles, of course. So a plugin can work for different components. If you implement a workflow into your own extension, you can still use the, the Joomla publishing plugin if your system has the same structure or your component has the same structure. And here you can then whitelist and blacklist. Um, if you say, okay, I have my shop and I have my user management and for the user management it should be used and for the shop it should not be used and you blacklist your shop for example um yeah more question um unfortunately i don't have any questions anymore all i have is really a ton of positive feedback for you um uh, but I have questions. sorry i have questions oh yeah go ahead because I, I saw the whole day there were, weren't that much questions, so I um, defined some questions. Uh, what you have your own questions. Yeah, <laughs> I prepared my own questions to fill the time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I, I made a similar talk before and there popped up some questions, so I, I thought I covered it here in my presentation. So what are the future plans of the workflow? Because um, it was merged from George um, yesterday night. So we are very, very young, um, so to speak, with the new version. And due of the time, uh, we don't have implemented everything. So the first th thing what should happen is integration. We would like to have the workflow integrated in more components. We are not sure where it makes sense. For example, it makes um, no sense in... I'm not sure what... what, what, what mm. And the thing about where does not make sense. Um, yeah, in the installation process, for example, I guess it makes no sense to integrate. But for example, in, in the modules, creating modules, we could implement it there. Or um, in the user registration, it would make sense to have a workflow. When is a user um, um, activated? Or uh, we could implement, for example, a um, blocking system what happens when he uh, failed to log in and so on. And as you can see, you don't have to walk through transitions, but you can also um, use the API to use your own stuff. Um, permissions. Um, on the one hand, we would like to, to extend, as, as mentioned before, the permissions itself of the workflow. On the other hand, um, why I started with this workflow project three years ago was that I was really annoyed and I'm still really annoyed about the fact that someone can edit an article and the second person publish it and then still the first person can edit the art, still the article um, if you don't remove the permissions manually. So what I would like to see is a plugin which handles the permissions of items. So uh, as long as it's not published, you can edit the article and if it's published, automatically the permissions are removed. 
uh, drafting, um, we have this versioning system in Joomla, which is so, um, semi cool, uh, at least at on a programmer um, view. What we would like to have is that you can um, write an article, you publish it, and then you make a review of the article and uh, improve it without publishing the new stuff. And on some time you say, hey, now the, the new draft is, is good. And I would like to publish it now, the new version. And of course, we have some challenges here. For example, what happens if I have a draft, but I need to correct and typo in the old version? So we have a similar drafts and stuff like that. Um, David is, is uh, nodding uh, knowledge. So he will implement this functionality. He has an idea already, I guess. Thank you, David. I, I don't have the idea, but I have the, the issue <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right now. Yeah. <laughs> publish up, publish down. Um, how, how, how do I say this politically correct? Um, the publish up, publish down functionality is nice, but not more. The problem is um, to publish up an article, it has to be published um, before. And then you have to type in a date, which makes absolutely no sense. Because for me, if publish up, publish down, the article is unpublished. Then some, something happens, and after two, two weeks, it gets published, something like that. Um, to, my, uh, to my personal horror, I saw that someone implement feature up and feature down, which make it worse, <laughs> in my opinion. But um, what we would like to have here is, um, George mentioned in the talk before, uh, poor man's cron from Nicola, uh, which implements a cron shop system. And we would like to have a chaining cron shop um, functionality in the workflow. So you create a workflow, you go in an article, and then you can set up a chain and and, and history and future history. What should happen with the article? Let's say you say, okay, this article should be published tomorrow. In two weeks, it should be featured. In uh, 10 weeks, it should uh, change the category and then it should be unfeatured in, in two years. And after 10 years, it should change to needs review. And this should be happen automatically. And this should is a, a bit of a vision from us to have you set it up once and then for next years, this, this um, article acts the way you planned it with the cron shop. And therefore, we need this um, cron shop pull request. So, um, yeah, go on it, test it, and it would support the workflow really big time if you get this uh, implemented. Next question, is there a graphical interface? Um, I really like the graphical interface from Jira. Jira is some kind of um, task management tool. Um, and they have a workflow deck. You can build a workflow on the fly without the Joomla table, as I saw before but you can track and drop and set up a workflow. And I really would like to have something like that, plus the option to see on each state, uh, on, on each space or place, and um, where you can change something in, in an article for a workflow, to see a little button where I can click on it, a model goes up and I see the whole workflow. What happens if I now execute this transition? Um, we started some very first um, approaches here. The problem is um, we, we don't still don't have a solution to manage um, big workflows with hundreds of stages and thousands of transitions in a good way. Yeah, that's, so that's, the, has... that, that, that's the one issue. The other issue is that you won't find a guy uh, merging that thing because I, I hereby quote George Wilson, no Jira's workflow is the worst thing in the history of Everness. Please, <laughs> no, 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 no. How long is the release lead? um depending on when you volunteer for being the release lead <laughs> yeah but yeah Tira is not a perfect one um george is here absolutely right it's it's really yeah but uh, we would like to have some graphical interfaces let's take it that way um can I create my own behavior? There, I would now show you the, the plugin system. So yes, you can create your own behavior. You can create your own plugins. Um, yeah, little screenshot. And uh, a big question is always, is the workflow only for large large agencies or large companies? And I have only a little blog page, so I don't 
need a workflow. Um, one of, of the results of this question was that we disable the workflow by default. So you don't have to use it if you don't want it. But that's my personal opinion. The workflow is not about managing a, a lot of people doing different stuff, but to get a standard into your system. So if you only are one, uh, you are only one person in your system and you write a little block, you still have different steps to execute until the blog post is online. For example, write in title, write in text, upload an image, uh, resize the image, and move it to the correct category. And the strength of, the of this workflow is that you can set up your system, your flow, that's why it's called a workflow, and um, you, you just press the button and then you, you, you are guided through your process and you, you avoid mistakes. So no, it's not only for large agency. There is a use case, of course, for them uh, managing people, but you can manage yourself with the workflow. And additional new plugin ideas. Um, I have a lot, but I guess um, I would say that's it's up to you um, guys. Um, what plugins idea do you have? And feel free to, we have the extension directory. I hope we will get a new section there, um, workflow categories and uh, workflow plugins where you put in all your ideas and it can be everything. It can be an API call, uh, which publish your article automatically on, on Facebook, on Twitter. Um, it can be what's very small, like um, changing one parameter. Um, yeah, there, there's, there are no limits. I, I think probably there are, but I can't think of one limits. More questions. Um, you see, I'm prepared. Um, I, I have a question. How, 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 how can I learn presenting like you? An example, of preparing my own questions uh, for my own sessions. Is there, is there some, some video tutorial about this? Yeah. <laughs> if not, you should really do this. Udemy doing it Benjamin style. Yeah, I'll show you on the next, on the next security sprint. <laughs> Sounds good. Okay, yeah. thank you, Benjamin. That was uh, insightful. If you have any questions, send me an email. Yeah. Um, to, to, or on clip, or um, yeah, I don't have Twitter. I don't have, I have Facebook, but I don't look it. So email or clip, please. Tinder? No? Okay. Yes. Sorry, again, I didn't. Tinder? Uh, no. No? Okay. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, thank you for, for uh, showing us the workflow. Um, I having a rather big client project myself right now where this would be the perfect fit and solve a gazillion issues. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm excited to see this happening. Um, we're now going to take another five minute break and then uh, kick off with uh, George again, uh, presenting Joomla for Beta. Um, and uh, yeah, then uh, we almost made it through the 24 hours of Jane Beyond. So grab another cup of coffee or a beer or whatever you prefer, and then we'll be back in five minutes. Thank you.